I've been scarred and I've been bruised. I have learned just what to do. I need to leave my past behind me. I need to look, look, look to the future. No matter what will come. Hi everyone! Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you so so much for your responses to our welcome back video and giveaway. Thank you so so much uh, for your responses on the guest lighting video. It feels so good to be back. We're really in our element now. We're back back. Back back. The only thing missing is Tingo and it is business as you know it. We are doing emotional neglect today. Tingo should be here, right? Tingo should be here. You talk neglect, it makes absolutely no sense for Tingo to not be here. Um, so let's pretend Tingo is here. The only reason Tingo isn't here, I keep forgetting Tingo at the office. Uh, one of those topics that I think, an extension from the guest lighting video, uh, we really are about issuing vocab and giving language to experiences that people are having but stay so long in dysfunction because mm, there just isn't a language to define what is going on. They just don't understand what to call this, how many other people feel it. Is it me? Is, is there something wrong with me for feeling it? And therefore they try and they perform and, 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 and simply because they're missing the literacy to describe this and therefore normalize it. Emotional experiences are abstract like that. They're not this concrete injury that can summon outside witnesses to come meet your need because most of the time emotional experiences cannot be spotted by the next person. That does not make your emotional experience less valuable and it does not make your emotional needs less important. And you would be surprised how many relationships end primarily because a person experienced neglect and how difficult it is to tell the onlooker as to why the relationship ended therefore what the environment feeds back to you minimizes your experience and you think you were wrong and then you go back because you're trying to explain this catastrophe that was caused in your heart because i mean neglect is dehumanizing if we're being real about it it is literally overlooking your value as a human being and your experience as a human being it's really a deep deep injury but quite a hard one to explain to the next person and therefore in their attempt to understand you they may you know not intentionally actually undermine the gravity of your experience and once the environment doesn't match what you're saying you tend to doubt it you tend to gaslight yourself and maybe give dysfunction another chance because people aren't understanding it it's not making so much sense i would like today to validate that emotional experiences in a relationship are one of the primary reasons as to why we are in the relationship. We're social beings. There are some emotional needs we cannot meet on our own. So advocating for self-love is one thing, but self-love and relational love are not mutually exclusive. It's not one or the other. There's a place for both. And being in a relationship is assigning the responsibility to meet our longing for attachment, our longing to be seen and validated to this person that we have chosen to trust. And therefore, when we extend this bid for connection, when we need this bid for connection, and it isn't reciprocated, it actually feels quite ne neglectful. And people neglect us in many ways. One, firstly, by not returning your, your bid for connection. You know, when you reach out, you're not really quite sure that they're going to reach out back, or you're not sure that when I need you, you would always be there for me, or at least most of the time, always is impractical. But a healthy person will at least try to be there for you most of the time. So once you're not sure of these things, then you stop being vulnerable. You actually stop placing yourself in a position where you're going to need them. Because it has been articulated to you by history that needing you is a risk. When I need you, I don't have a guarantee that most of the time you're going to be there. As I guess, I am going to they just simply ghost you. Ghosting is one of the most disrespectful forms of emotional neglect where they just continue with life in a way that disregards your existence. It's almost like you are not even here, you don't matter. And at the heart of neglect, there's that message, you don't matter. An exchange, you know, people who have read the book will have heard of the word stroking. Ah, people who read the book, I'm that person now guys that refers you to the book. If you haven't read the book, why haven't you? So people that have read the book will understand the significance of stroking. Stroking in psychology is a unit for acknowledgement. All humans have a need for their existence to be acknowledged. We do this by eye contact. When a person talks, you look at them. We greet one another. If a person is, pa is passing and you've seen them, you acknowledge that I see you. That is essentially what stroking is, that you exist and I see you. 
right? So when you exist and people pretend like you don't, that does something to your heart. And if it happens often enough, we start malfunctioning. We need nurturing. We need acknowledgement. We need validation. We need to be seen. Most importantly, we need to be cherished. That's our pillars of life game. You are cherished. You are treated like not only do you exist, but your existence is special. That's what we are longing for from the next person. Neglect is enough grounds to terminate a relationship. Because if it is frequent, you are treated like you don't matter, you'll start internalizing it. You'll start feeling like you're not special enough to do stuff for, you're not special enough to be looked at, you're not special enough to be touched, you're not special enough to be held. If that happens frequent enough, you start internalizing that message. Because unfortunately, we don't live outside ourselves. We, we really rely on the environment to receive us in a particular manner and feed that information back to us. It's so encouraging when you're a particular being and people keep saying you want more of that, then you do more of it. Now if you do this and you do that and people treat you like you don't, you don't exist at all, you start withering away and disappearing actually and feel sad. Humans are not very different from other living species. Humans are different from plants. If you don't water them, if you don't nurture them and look after them, they actually start malfunctioning. They actually die. Like this stroke exchange is really like water to your plant. It's like food to our soul. And you don't run out when it's mutual because as you water them, they water in you back. As you give to them, they give to you back. And we're in this constant exchange of meeting each other's relational needs. I often liken neglect to sucking on a pacifier, you know, um, where I'm pulling on something but nothing is coming out. That's what being in relationship with people uh, feels like when they are neglectful. They are here, you look like you are relationshiping, but there's just something that isn't coming in. There's something that isn't nourishing. They're not actually giving to you, whether they ghost you, whether they breadcrumb you. Breadcrumbing is the psychological phenomena when they give you little in promise that there could be more, almost to keep you lingering around. We call that breadcrumbing. Maybe one day we'll cover breadcrumbing because breadcrumbing is a way of continuing to neglect you by almost putting little breadcrumbs, just when you're starting to back away, little breadcrumbs and then neglect you the rest of the way. And then just when you start to actually understand the malnourishment and back away, they throw more breadcrumbs. So these people that swindle the good side around, but infrequently, you know, so it's not enough to keep you full. Frequency is a thing, you know, in breadcrumbing. That's also another way of continuing to neglect a person or staying long in neglect. That as you start to acknowledge that I'm not getting enough, I'm not getting what I need, they actually put a little bit just to confuse you and make you think, if I search harder, if I stick around long enough, maybe they're going to get it because here's a sign that maybe they get it. A person that loves you voluntarily, gives to you. They want you to be full. It is important to them that you remain nourished. You don't need to perform to get it and they don't need to hint by putting a crumb that one day I will give you something. They generally give you the best out of what they have today. If they get more in the future, they'll give you more then. But in the now, they want you to be well. In the now, they are curious about what you are needing and pledge a commitment to delivering it. And they do so most of the time. Most being the key word here. Healthy relationships feel good most of the time. They're not excused from adversity. They're not excused from seasons. They're not excused from ups and downs. And also because humans are humans, they will neglect you sometimes. There's just 24 hours in a day. They need to attend to other stuff. You won't always make it to the top of the list. But if a person is healthy and they care about your health, they attempt to do so most of the time, the times where they drop the ball on you, the times where they let you self-soothe on your own and they can't be there for you, should be far outweighed by the times where they are dependable for you and will return your bids for connection and will be attentive and attuned to what you are needing. Go revisit the frequency. Go revisit the frequency. If the good is infrequent, that's breadcrumbing. That's breadcrumbing. Because people aren't perfect. Nobody is going to meet all your needs all the time. It's impractical and it's unfair because they've also got their own needs to meet. And I know this is a particular thing for 
you want to excuse me, James, my team is all male. So I'm talking to them, low-key, behind those cameras. This is a difficult one for black men to understand. Where they can't tell the difference between looking after and cherishing. So if they skewered over you, you've got shelter, there's food, they called you once a day. They just don't understand complaints of neglect. Generally, when people come to the practice, it's usually the female complaining of emotional neglect and the guy issuing proof of looking after them. And I know it sounds similar, but it isn't quite the same thing. Cherishing something is valuing it for its uniqueness. You get me? It's valuing it for its individuality, tending to it individually. Looking after is protection. Like a person that's looking after a flock of, of livestock is looking after them. They're doing a good job looking after them. But you wouldn't go as far as saying they're cherishing the sheep, would you? They probably can't even tell the one from the other. Security personnel, they're looking after the building. To cherish, to know the quality of the furniture, you know, the characteristics of what it is they're looking after. That's cherishing, that's saying this thing is special. Emotional experiences require that we feel special to you. So when I make time to look you in your eyes, it makes the other person feel like they're special. When I make time to find out about your day, it tells you that what happens in your life is important. You're special to me, special enough to make time for, special enough to sometimes be inconvenienced, special enough to slow down and attend to you. Your well-being is special to me. People want to feel like they're special. There's too many people in the world. Romance is an exclusive experience. That's why you generally date one person at a time. And exclusivity implies this is special, that there's people, they're important, but you are special. Therefore, neglect makes a person feel like, I'm not special enough to you. They are fine and you you go to work, you go to that thing, you go to that other role, and then there's me, you know, I'm just like part of your many chores. And this is the complaint, where a person feels like we are devoid of intimacy. There isn't a unique, special connection between me and you. I'm similar to the person that's attending to you at the shops. I'm similar to the friend. I'm similar to everybody else that is in your life. I don't really feel like I'm special. Usually that's an intimacy complaint. You don't see me. Have you ever seen that English that it's so nice to be seen? That's nice. For a person to have a window into your experiences because they asked. That's People are not mind readers. Even the closest people, the most intimate of people, it didn't happen by accident. It's because they asked for a window into your experiences. They ask, they make time, they observe, they create moments of connection, and therefore they start knowing your experience. It is revealed in your smile, it is revealed in your conversation, in your hugs, in your whatever, and they get it a bit more, and a bit more, and a bit more. That's how intimacy is built by returning bids for connection, by being curious about the experience of another human because you're healthy enough to know that they're different from you and they're as special as you are. If you didn't get this, it was enough grounds to call the relationship off. And sometimes it sounds as vague as you could be not divine. And generally it subjects you to gaslighting because the person won't apologize. Because remember, neglect is transgression by omission. It's not that they did anything wrong. They aren't doing enough of what every human being needs and, and is entitled to. So it's difficult to hold into account somebody who transgresses by not doing. Then you're left feeling like, hmm, we're not quite gelling, but I can't tell what it is they're doing exactly. I just know that I'm so unhappy and I'm so lonely and I'm so sad. It's a good enough reason. You're not being dramatic. You're not being petty. It's a good enough reason. You can't divorce your emotions from your body. And when a person isn't attending to them, you have every right to feel like my feelings are not being met. My experiences are not being investigated, cared about. That's enough grounds. So even if people aren't validating it, it happened. You're not imagining it. Because I know in the absence of overt injury, this is the thing when people are better and bruised, there's usually overt sympathy. You generally don't even have to speak up to say you're hurting. But neglect doesn't, doesn't have the same luxury where people can tell without you speaking that you've been wounded. 
and this video is to validate that that wound matters just like all wounds it is not inferior your hurt is actually hurtful enough enough to do something about and if you left a relationship because you felt neglected it was enough grounds it was enough grounds and it's okay if other people don't understand it this is an internal subjective fulfillment only you can tell if you're feeling nourished when you put something in your mouth and it's okay if the answer was no and I hope this gives people in relationships language to start negotiating what's going wrong because I know this is an ongoing fight in our black relationships mostly where they just value the, 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 the concrete things to look after and in our culture emotions haven't been a thing that has been treasured for a long time. We're quite novices at, at valuing the emotional experience. Generally, um, our people, especially our men, have been socialized to mise emotions. That yes, you feel them, but they're not a thing. You don't have to talk about them. You don't have to talk about them. You don't need to attend to them. You know, um, tap it up and keep it moving. Uh, and that's not working for our relationships. It's really not. And that's where we lose one another. So I hope this starts a conversation where we start putting a greater deal of respect in the emotional experience of the relationship. It matters just as much as the other experiences of the relationship. I will do love bombing next for you guys. So yes, we are going to see each other in the love bombing video. Not next week, but the other week. Have a good one. I've been scarred and I've been bruised. I have learned just what to do. I need to leave my past behind me I need to look, look, look to the future No matter